I'd, I'd met Jack doing Winds of War and uh, actually helped he and um, uh, Mike Miner get Emmys because uh, Leslie and my partner Pete Kleinow and I uh, uh, put in for Emmy consideration after we'd finished on the, on the Winds of War. And we had worked on it for like 14 months, did a huge amount of work on that. It was an 18-hour miniseries. But you could only put in one. And we did stuff on all 18 hours. I mean, some stuff. But you had to put in where you did a lot and only pick one episode. It had to be one of the things. And it was the bombing or Berlin that we put in, because where we did a huge amount of work, because we had the... Uh, the, these Wellingtons, that there were only two in the world that were still in existence. They're cloth-covered bombers that the British built in the mid-30s, 1930s. And there are only two in the world, and they don't fly. And so everything in that, that sequence and that whole thing, the bombing of Berlin thing, from the takeoff to, to the whole bombing sequence, uh, it's all models and like three scales. I used three, four scales, actually, to do the entire sequence. Uh, and so that's where I met Jack Degovi, who was the production designer on the show. And Mike Miner had been helping Jack here. And I'd known Mike very, I knew he was a very good friend because working at my father's in the 70s on Land of the Lost and a ton of other things. So he was working as an art director on the show when they were shooting here in town because a good chunk of uh, Winds of War was done in Europe. But a lot was done here too, and particularly effects, and we were doing the major effect work on it. So when I put in for an Emmy, they allowed five people. And so it was Peter, Leslie, and I, and I said, let's put Jack Degovi and Mike Miner on it because this bombing of Berlin sequence, they played a big role in helping out because we did this all this forced perspective out in Long Beach. I found a, I got a, a naval base out there, Air Force Naval Base, that had a big grass areas and a tree line in the back. It looked like grass field in England. And the, you didn't have any skyscrapers at the time, in the early 80s. There are now a few that you could, it's in Long Beach. But at the time in that area, could shoot out again. This is that business about not having anything in the background. And it was great, and we could build a foreground two foot high, 60 foot long, like 25 foot wide uh, set, grass set that I got smaller grass, you know, very tiny from things and covered it with it. And we did these planes taking off this but it blended into the rest of the background and the smudge pots that people were lighting, they'd run in the back 200 feet away uh, where, and be lighting these and you know, I shot it like 30 frames a second to take a curse off this but not make people look like they were slow motion. And then we were real careful on pulling the planes as they were, were coming up and the props are going and their lights are on and even though it's sunset, so we, we had to shoot these things shot it for like four days because, five days, because a lot of shots. But we also had foreground people. I had people in the foreground, models in the midground, and it's all in camera, no, no opticals or anything in the whole sequence. And it's totally real. And Jack Degovia is standing for the final takeoff when the, that uh, Robert Mitchum is, he's an American exchange officer, he's hitching a ride with the Brits. To, on a bombing mission over Berlin. So when his plane takes off, and it's on wires, we got it on wires, and I got a thing, uh, and the pole that the two wires go up to, uh, well, it's coming this way if you're the camera, like this. In the foreground, and the camera's there, in the foreground is Jack Standing. He's a British officer with, with a, you know, a scarf and it's blowing in the wind, you know, and of course it's monofilament. We got a ladder up there monofilaming it, make it look like it's blowing because you couldn't have huge wind there and have this model plane and, you know, you got to watch out what you do, so you give it away. And the plane's taking off 
and he's standing there watching with his, his uh, pipe and uh, his scarf blowing. And it's the production designer, it's Jack Degovia. And the plane takes off, and its wing misses his leg by about two inches. It goes right by him because it's the model. So he's there. There's other people in the background 200 feet away. So you have foreground, midground, background, all. And I'm nodal point panning the camera, which I used to do all the camera work myself in those days, figure this stuff out and do it myself. Panning the camera around, following the plane as it lifts off by Jack. So there's a whole bunch of shots like that. There's another one with my son, Chris, the youngest son. He's playing an Irk, which is a young British uh, field worker, you know, in a uniform. And we're, we're panning this, this plane, uh, taxiing up to a stop, waiting in line. It's getting its next to take off. And so I'm panning with it as it comes up. And st as it stops, we stop. And then right here in the foreground, my youngest son leans in and lights a smudge pop. Well, the plane's right there, where, right where you are, and he's right here, you know. But, and then there's others lighting, running in the background, lighting smudge pots. And it, again, totally convincing. You wouldn't even suspect that there was anything going wrong, anything about it that wasn't right. And, and also, we only had the one plane, so that when you're looking this way, before the panning, there was three more planes lined up behind it, but they were flat cutouts. I planned this ahead of time a lot with Mike Miner. He and I planned it all out, and we shot stills of the one plane we had, knowing where we were going to put them at the right angle so we could do a cut out, do a photo blow up, do a cutout, because it would, the perspective would change a little, each one back, so it was shot each properly where they were going to have to put it in space, and did a, uh, a cutout, and then touched it up, painted, paint touched it up for the color to be, be right. And, and then put in uh, some lights. And it's, these cutouts are out there in this shot that pans off those. And not in a billion years would you ever know that there's all that kind of stuff going on. And, uh, and there was some other, some other very sophisticated yeah. shots done in that whole sequence. And that lifts off, and then we have all the flying over and bombing Berlin, and Voskosel did the, the actual final big when they hit the munitions thing. So he's a little bit into that, uh, in that sequence, too. So put Jack and, and Mike on it, and we won. So they got Emmys out of that thing. 